Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Well, here we go again, another round of pickups. And that's what I'm going to talk about on today's episode. So roll that intro. All right, guys, um, I got a new setup here, so let me know how you guys like it. Uh, I got this little thing on here to reduce the glare. It's not perfect, but it'll have to do for now. Uh, anyway, I want to talk about some pickups. So the first thing I picked up recently was this really cool Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles crayon holder. This is so cool looking. And this is actually vintage. It's 1990 from Mirage Studios. And I remember having this when I was a kid. And that's the main reason that I picked this up is because I actually owned this back in the day. So I don't know. I really like this. I picked this up for $10 at the convention. You open it up. It's still got the nice hinge on it. There's actually some crayon residue in here and when I smelt it it smelt like old crayon so it just really took me back but you can put anything in here uh, extra weapons for your Ninja Turtles or hell you can even put GI Joe weapons in here but this is actually in pretty good shape so uh, yeah I picked this up for 10 bucks and it makes a cool display piece I'll probably uh, put it with all my other Ninja Turtles stuff and just display it so uh, let me know if you guys ever had one of these and it has this like sturdy handle on it and I always like that like just think carrying this around in school man you'd, you'd be so cool looking you know so yeah the uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles crayon holder but a lot of people use these for you know anything school related pencils markers color pencils crayons hell anything so I like it. It's pretty cool. The next thing I picked up was some Batman cereal. Th this is actually really cool. This thing is almost bursting at the seams with cereal. And this is actually uh, vintage also. If you look on here, it actually says DC Comics 1989. So this was uh, the cereal that they released for the Batman movie that came out. It's just so cool. And these are actually still pretty reasonable. I think I picked this up for, uh, I don't know, like 20 bucks. If you could feel how heavy this is, I mean, this I've seen bags uh, outside of this box and they're filled up to here. I mean, it's incredible, you know, how much cereal came in these. Now you get a box of cereal and it's probably filled to like right here, or right here, and the rest is air. So, and, and this, there's a bunch of different versions of this box. And this is the uh, Win a Batmobile. So look at this kid, man, he's just like, driving around in a cool ass Batmobile. And it says free inside, mini toy Batmobile. So inside the box, you'd get a free Batmobile. And if you turn it around on the back, you could actually win one. I mean, look at this. Look how cool this looks. Win a Batmobile. Look inside this box. If you find a key with your mini toy Batmobile, you instantly win a battery powered Batmobile you can drive. See the side for details, no purchase necessary. Recommended for a child up to 65 through 75 pounds, age three to seven. So if you're a three-year-old and you weigh 65 pounds, wow. But anyway, look at this little kid. He's all hype. He pulls out his, you know, Batmobile. And look at this, like this dude right here is mad jealous because you see his arm and she's like holding it. Well, see, that's her dude. But when she sees this homeboy right here, oh man, she's pointing at him like, God, I wish you could be as cool as him. What am I doing with you? So, I don't know. I'm just fucking around. But uh, free inside mini toy Batmobile. You'll have hours of fun with this cool toy Batmobile, just like the one in the movie. Race around with your Batmobile as you track down the criminals of Gotham City. You know, this is just so cool. And it tells you how to enter the the, uh, the sweepstakes and you know, the rules, no purchase necessary, how to claim your prize. 
I wonder if anybody actually uh, claimed that Batmobile. That's really cool. And I love how it's like costume not included. Like somebody would, you know, ride in and be like, well, I got my Batmobile, but you guys fucked me on the costume. You didn't give it to me. So <laughs> I don't know. Just a really cool piece. I'll just display it uh, in my game room. Natural honey nut flavor. I actually had this back in the day and these pretty much just tasted like plain Captain Crunch. On the bottom of it's really cool, so it actually shows a, the bat symbol. And at the top it shows it too. So there you go, the uh, Batman cereal based on the original 1989 Tim Burton Batman movie. So cool. Now the next thing I picked up is a NECA figure. And like I said, I uh, a love-hate relationship with NECA because their shipping practices suck. Super hard to get their figures. But when this went on sale, I had to get it to add it to the collection. Sold out instantly. But this is the ultimate April O'Neil Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles figure based off the original movie. You could actually pre-order this for a little while. And I actually got one. So I'm excited because everybody complained that there wasn't an April figure. Well, they actually worked out a deal with the actress and they made a figure of her and this is like a little kind of like a holographic uh, image if you remember this image from the movie this is where shredders looking at the tv screen while she's doing the interview and he's like he throws the dagger right here and it's like psh, it looks all cheesy and terrible cgi but here's the figure and it has like this little you know thing you can open uh here's the top of it and I don't really, I like the packaging, but I really don't care about it because I open up all these uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle movie figures. So let's go ahead and open it up. And there you go. Uh, she's got an actual swappable head. She's got her purse, a microphone, which is cool. And one really cool thing I think they added was the sigh. Because if you remember in the movie, uh, she actually found Raphael's sigh. Been waiting for you, Miss O'Neill. Am I behind on my Sony payments again? <laughs> Your mouth may yet bring you much trouble, Miss O'Neill. I deliver a message. <laughs> Shut it. Super cool. So you can actually put that in her purse and, you know, reenact scenes with the foot soldier. There's some pizza boxes up here too. And she has interchangeable hands. Since she has high heels on, uh, these are one of the few figures that actually come with a stand because she really wouldn't stand well, I'm guessing. They finally gave her a stand. I think it actually resembles her pretty well. A lot of people complained about her knee. So if you look here, like this is the actual figure and it just looks ridiculous. So I've seen people make customs. Uh, they give her like leggings, cover up that weird looking knee thing she has going on. But uh, here's the figure. Uh, has a nice little picture on the side here. And on the back is, uh, shows her in some different poses, which honestly looks really great. And it says April O'Neil. Now you can catch America's favorite green teens in their first live action blockbuster film. After waiting in a puddle of radioactive waste, these radical reptiles are transformed into New York City's greatest crime fighting quartet. I'm sorry, it says quartet. Also following the city's unprecedented crime wave is intrepid Channel 3 reporter April O'Neil, who eventually finds herself face to face with the turtles when Raphael rescues her from the Foot Clan Ninja. This highly detailed figure features an assortment of movie accurate accessories and over 25 points of articulation. So yeah, you know, then you got the NECA logo, but it's just really cool. A lot of people don't open these up at all, um, but I always open them up. So uh, there you go. There's the side art here and it kind of shows her like in like a dark background alley, which is really cool, but there you go, Ultimate April O'Neil. Next thing I picked up, some more Ninja Turtles stuff because I'm a Ninja Turtles fan. Now I actually had this too when I was a kid. Uh, this isn't brand spanking new, but when I saw it, I had to have it. It's an original 1990 Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles fanny pack. Now, there's a ton of different ones of these, but this is the actual one that I had. And just look at the, look at the artwork on this. So freaking cool, man. And uh, it's kind of got some stains on it, but I picked this up for five bucks. So, I mean, I wish it was big enough to wear now because I'd actually wear this to conventions. If you ever go to conventions, one thing you never do is you bring your wallet inside. I know it sounds silly, but 
with so many people, you can get pickpocket easily. So what a lot of people do is they actually wear fanny packs, especially vendors, so they can access their money quickly and it's right in front of them. Because I would actually just wear this and whenever I needed to get money out, I just unzip this bad boy, pull the money out for whatever I was buying, zip it back up. But this is cool because it's actually from 1989, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. So, like I said, Ninja Turtles was insanely popular at this time. They put their face on everything. The Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles fanny pack, one of the coolest items. I'm not big enough to wear it, so what I would probably do is I would just wear this around one of my belt loops and just, you know, let it hang down in the front, kind of like that, put my stuff in it, so. There you go. Another thing I picked up, I went to Walmart and I had no clue that these had even released. I was able to pick these up at Walmart. So if you guys go to Walmart, make sure you check these out. It is the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Q figs, I guess. So here's Raphael and there's great articulation on these, but they kind of just sit here like this. They stand, they have their own uh, stands and they got like a little sewer pipe right here and they're all on top of it. So there's there's Raphael, and these things just look incredible. Um, but for some reason, the Walmart I went to only had Michelangelo and Raphael. I actually had to get on the internet to find the other two. But what's weird is, but I was able to pick up Leonardo and Donatello here for actually cheaper than that online. So I don't, I don't know if these are discontinued or, or why they're cheaper. But I mean, look at this. Just look how cool these things look. Great articulation, awesome colors, and these things sit anywhere. So I recommend picking up a set of these. I don't know if they're going to make any more. That'd be awesome if they made a set of bad guys. What do you guys think? Uh, it's the uh, full set of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle Q Fig. So if you get a chance, uh, go to Walmart and uh, pick you up a set. I'm just glad I actually got them. So there you go. The next couple things I got... Some stuff I picked up when I went to a convention. I've been looking for this game for a while. The game isn't rare, but it's hard to find with, uh, you know, a nice clean copy. And I've been looking for it. And it's called Forgotten Worlds for the Sega Genesis. Me and my uncle played this game. We rented it multiple times when we were younger. And uh, I really enjoyed it. It's such a cool game. It has two-player co-op, so that's one reason we loved it. But I picked this up at the convention for a great deal. And I actually bought... A couple other things from them, but I'll show those off in a different video from the same vendor I picked, but I picked this up. The uh, Forgotten Worlds 16-bit Sega Genesis cartridge. Now, this is an earlier title, and you can tell by the uh, grid pattern. Uh, a lot of the early Genesis titles had this grid pattern, and people always call it, you know, the grid pattern Genesis games. Later on, they switched to red and all kinds of other stuff, but I really like these original uh, grid style uh, artwork on the uh, boxes. So it's complete and it's in really, really good shape. So if you've ever played this game, I'm sure anybody that's my age probably played this game back in the day. So it has the manual pretty clean. I mean, there's a little bit of wear and tear, but not bad at all. Shows the controls. You know, I, I just missed, I just missed this, you know, looking at these. These are just non-existent, you know? So, 1989, Sega of America. So cool. And usually, in these manuals, it would show the different worlds and the scoring. I mean, just so cool, man. Shows all the levels, what everything does, and all your power-ups. Forgotten Worlds for the Sega Genesis. Nice, clean cartridge. And as soon as I seen it, I was like, well... That's coming home with me. So, Forgotten Worlds for the Sega Genesis. Such a cool game. If you guys get the chance, check it out. Now, the last thing I picked up was a Super Nintendo game. <sighs> the memories that I have with this game. My cousin Travis used to own this game. And uh, we played it. And it's weird because I'm not a huge sports so when he bought this and we played it, we was immediately hooked. And it's... King Griffey Jr. presents Major League Baseball. This game is so cool, first of all. King Griffey Jr. is on it, and it comes with the free collector baseball card. But I'm not going to get everything out, but it is complete. But I will take it out of this little thing in case there's a glare. So uh, I picked this up, and I mean, just look at it. Such a cool, I mean, 
God, I just wish they made boxes like this still. This thing's actually pretty clean. I mean, there's a little bit of wear and tear, but not bad, not bad at all. So uh, yeah, Ken Griffey Jr. Baseball, one of the best baseball games for the Super Nintendo. I mean, and the crazy thing is, is um, people think it's either this game or, you know, Ken Griffey Jr. Winning Run, which is the sequel. Ken Griffey Jr. was definitely uh, very popular in the early 90s. So um, he got his own game. Fun game. Uh, me and my uh, cousin Travis used to play this game all the time. One little tidbit about Ken Griffey Jr. is that he was a huge fan of NBA Jam. One thing I heard was that he called the people who made NBA Jam, which was the same people who made Mortal Kombat, uh, John Tobias and Ed Boone. And he actually called, like, look, this is a crazy story. He called them and was like, yo, I want to be, I want to be in uh, NBA Jam as a playable character. Like, that's how popular he was. He was just like, fuck it, I'm going to call him up and I'm going to ask to be in, uh, you know, NBA Jam. So, such a cool, such a cool little story. And uh, that, that was the, the power that he had. He was incredibly popular for the Seattle Mariners uh, back in the early 90s. So I had to pick it up. Like I said, I tried to get everything that I played on the Super Nintendo as a kid complete in box. This was one of them. So I'm glad I picked it up. I'm glad I was able to show it off. So that's going to do it for my pickups. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope I didn't ramble on too long. Oh, yeah. One more thing. Let me know how you like the new view. Let me know how it looks. All right. Thanks, guys. Well, there you go. A couple more pickups to add to the collection. If you guys have any more recent pickups, leave your comments in the comment section below. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And until next time, keep on reminiscing, baby. Hey, guys. What's going on? It is Joel here, and welcome to Back in the Day. Um, given the fact that we are only a couple of weeks away from Halloween, uh, I figured, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and do my unboxing today of the very, very iconic uh, Castlevania for the Nintendo Entertainment System. Mm -hmm.